fairly brief here, but echo some of the sentiments colleagues that have already been given up here. I'd like to thank, obviously, Coach Keller and, and Corey here for putting this on, Jason Danley for the BSN for sponsoring this event, and all the coaches in the conference right now for welcoming opportunities uh, as far as at, asking if I needed anything or going through and saying that they very comfortable and helping out, and I appreciate that as we get up and get rolling. I think one of the things that we rolled into at Briarcliff right now, and one of the things I'm trying to stress to our players and everybody around the program right now is we really aren't looking at anything that's happened in the past. And that's not meant to be offensive to anybody who's come through the program previously, but it's something that we don't control. It's something that actually has absolutely nothing to do with what we do in the future. And so what we've really been stressing right now is taking care of the day-to-day -day things from what we do off the field to what we do on the field. And that's going to be something that, as I speak, you know, we're going to talk about those a little bit and everything that I do right now as we move forward as a program when we go that way. I'd like to thank a couple of guys who are sitting here right now, Kyle Langhoff and Coach Floyd Webb. Kyle's our defensive coordinator, joined us from Central Methodist University. And Coach Webb's coaching our offensive line, came over from the Mel. And right now, as anybody goes through making that, being a first-time head coach and going through those adjustments. You know, this is my 17th year as a college football coach, but everything's new as you go through it the first time being a head coach. And those guys have been very, very helpful in, in me making the adjustment and, and learning and you know, kind of keeping me on my toes, making sure I've gone through and covered some things. As we look at our team upcoming for this fall, you know, obviously one of the things everybody keeps telling me is we got nowhere to go but up. And I guess that is true to a certain extent. When you're on 11, there is no place to go but up. Uh, but like I said, what we're going to really look at is focusing in on each, making sure we do each practice right, go through each week, play each game, and then at the end of the season we'll worry about adding up the wins and losses. And to start with, we've got to do a better job of protecting the football. And if there's anything that we have stressed a lot of, you can't do anything without the ball. And so that's something that we've you know, we really looked at, and that starts obviously on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, up front is where I really believe you need football. And that's something we told our offensive line continually. Uh, we've had a number of guys who have some returning experience. We're starting over. And that's one of the things that they've learned. So nobody's guaranteed to start a position. You've got uh, Ashton Pachota and Cole Henry who came out having some pretty good springs as interior players. John Nemec was a guy who was, uh, missed quite a bit of the spring with an injury, but I think physically brings some attributes to the game that needs to, to step up in some other areas. And then we have some younger guys coming in as well out of our freshman recruiting class uh, that we're hoping are going to push and compete and kind of earn their way onto the field. Our quarterback position is the one that always comes up. It's the one everybody wants to talk about. There was three guys who rotated a year ago and went through with two of those three returning, and Kyle Gertis and Lane Clawson. Uh, we also have a guy named Ryan Hyatt who finished up the spring and probably showed very good improvement from the start of the spring to the end. At this point, we haven't named anybody to start going in. And we have a transfer by the name of Caleb Phyllis coming out of Southwest Baptist University in Missouri, who uh, we also expect to come on in and, and join the fold and compete. So come game one, that's still not set. And it's going to be something that camp's going to be able to, to decide and dictate. And what's really going to come down to is who's able to direct what we do offensively and, and take care of the football. As far as one area where we lost a lot of guys, but I think can actually be a fairly decent strength for us at the receiver position. Uh, with Luke Roeder returning, Luke missed all of last year with, uh, with an injury, uh, but was coming off of the, the previous year where he led our team in, in receptions and yardages, yardage and touchdowns and all of those. So what we're hoping is he's able to return back to, to full form and help us there. Uh, Drew Prohaska, I thought, had a very good spring and is athletically a guy who can do some certain things with in space. Zach Clement uh, and Chase Colvin are two taller, lanky receivers who I think, you know, they're now going to have their opportunity to see what exactly they can do. So even though statistically it looks like we, you know, we've lost our, our top three receivers, I think it's an area we can, can actually be a strength for us on the offensive side of the ball. The running back position, that's going to be one that's going to be quite a bit up in the air. David Shepard, who played, believe it or not, started as a fullback last year and then moved to guard. Uh, was our fullback to start a camp, and by the end of camp, we had him starting a tailback. And one of the things I like with with, uh, with Shep is he just goes straight forward. And, you know, Coach Ryan already touched on it a little bit. You know, 
you want a guy who can lean forward and continue forward and fall forward. Shep didn't have a whole lot of moves, so he has no choice in the matter but to fall forward. So those are the things that we're looking for right now. Our guys is, is plugging along that way. We also have a freshman coming in by the name of Dwayne Radden out of, uh, out of California who ran for just under 2,500 yards and 29 touchdowns last year as a senior. So obviously he's going to get a very good look. Uh, defensively, and that's the side of the ball that we're going to ask a lot of to start out with. They know that they were put in some bad situations. And we're putting them in some bad situations again as we continue to grow. But uh, I, th I think that's an area that can be the strength of our team up front. We aren't as strong as we need to be depth wise, but we continue to try to develop that. Uh, Adnan Kasipovich on the inside is a guy who we expect to step up and, and help us make some plays. Joe Melton, who's been a very good leader of this program right now. Continuing on, although he's going to miss the first few games with an injury, but we expect him back hopefully by game three, game four, somewhere in that time frame. And then uh, Brennan White, who's also going to be a fifth-year senior, who's returning from an injury a year ago. So those are some guys up front that hopefully we can see him step up and help us. Linebacker, I expect to be the strength of our team. If you were to sit there and say, well, what do you consider the, the top players on your program? Uh, basically, Insider, Bowman, and, and Jared McAvicka are two of our strongest players on the team and definitely playmakers for us. Jared is probably our best player on the team. And he's a guy that I want a bunch of our guys to kind of aspire up to, to play like. His motor's always going and he does a heck of a job for us out there. Billy Muzzle and Taylor Schumacher on the outside, man and an outside backer in a strong safety position are two guys that I also felt had a very good spring. And then in the secondary, we have three guys at corner. Jonathan Smith, who's a returning starter for us, who will only be a sophomore who physically has all the talent in the world. Now it's just going to be a matter of him growing up and, and putting that out there on the field. Uh, Ricky Miller and then Cecil Milton, who are the two other players return at corner we like. And then Ryan Prather, uh, starting for us at free safety, the returning starter from a year ago. So defensively, we're looking for those guys to hopefully continue to, to progress and, and help us out with things and, and go from there. In the kicking game, we're still looking for, you know, for a number of guys. And with Kane Keel returning, who's an all-conference punter for us, this is kind of a little, you know, that's one of those things you look at back and forth. You got the all-conference punter, there's usually a reason for that. Uh, but we'll continue to progress there. We have a number of freshman kickers coming in, and we expect one of those guys will, will pick it up. Most, notab most notably, probably a guy named Kevin Johnson out of Wisconsin, uh, who was an all-state kicker and also averaged over 42 yards a punt last year as a senior. So. He's going to be able to also be able to push Kane as we move forward. So hopefully what we find out of us is we're going to continue to progress. We go out there, we'll learn each week, and you see improvement throughout the year. And hey, at the end of the year, we'll see exactly how we did and, and go from there. Any questions? How healthy is Luke Roder? Is he back? He's, he, he's fine. He went through spring. You know, it's one of the things coming off of a knee. There's a a lot of guys who are always going to have a little bit of questioning on it as they, they go through and, and learn learn about it. You know, you're always going to have a little bit of swelling. It's, it's just part of the, the nature of the business. I think our biggest thing for Luke is going to be just getting him out on the field and getting him hit for that first time. Right? And seeing that he's able to get back up and go back in the huddle. And you know, once that happens, I think we'll be fine. Anything else?